Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to just discuss uh, how to read your opponent and also how to scout your opponent. Uh, I've got uh, a lot to cover so just forgive me, I've got a fair bit of notes here just to make sure I don't forget anything. <laughs> I don't really want to leave anything out so um, you'll see me referring to these just to make sure I, I haven't missed anything um, to tell you. Okay, so let's talk about, um, first I'll start with actually reading your opponent. So, although you should wherever possible scout your opponent first, uh, we'll talk about scouting your opponent in a second. Let's just imagine for the moment that basically you've, you've walked onto the court and you've never seen your opponent play in your life before. So you've got absolutely no idea who he is, what he does, or anything at all like that. So how can you get the best idea um, of what to expect from your opponent? And that's really the goal of what we're trying to, trying to do uh, as early as possible or as quickly as possible. You want to be able to get the picture on what to expect from your opponent so that you can fine tune your game plan. Now obviously making a tactical plan, well that's a topic I guess for another, another day to an extent. So what we're trying to do and discuss here is just how can you get up to speed on your opponent as fast as possible, starting from a position where you basically know nothing about him. Okay, so um, first things first, okay, is he right or left-handed? Um, sounds, sounds a bit stupid, but there are times when people have come off the court and not realised that they were playing a left-hander. Um, crazy as it sounds, you know, and they don't realise that where normally they're playing to this guy's what would normally be a right hand is backhand, they're playing into the left hand is forehand. Um, just hasn't twigged. So um, take note of that. Secondly, uh, just during the warm up, let's just say you're hitting up with the opponent in your two little two minute warm up. What I would suggest to do, or at least what I would do if I've never seen my opponent before, is I don't want to focus too much on warming up all my strokes. Um, I don't really want to give him a look at everything that I do. What I want to do is I want to get a look at him as much as possible. So rather than doing the normal two minute warm up where you, know, you counter hit a bit, you counter hit a bit, you loop a few, he loops a few, you loop a few, he loops a few, instead let him go. So basically, yeah, counter hit a few, then just start to block, let him loop, you know, give him a few pushes, see what he does against the push, you know, just basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to give your opponent all the opportunities to show you what sort of strokes he has, put the ball up a little bit high, see whether he loops it or smashes it, you know, go back and chop from a little bit further back, see what he does. Um, lob if you want to. I mean, okay, you're showing him your lob, but you're unlikely to lob someone down and just see whether he loops it, smashes it, anything like that. So I would be starting with basically just trying to feed my opponent so that I see his counter hit, I see his loop, I see his backhand loop, maybe a smash, see his short game a little bit and pay attention to his push, uh, see his flick, you know, just see what kind of flick he's got, and, and let him do all that kind of stuff, rather than taking time to warm up my loop so much. Um, unless he's got some sort of very strange rubber where the ball's coming off very funnily. If that's the case, then I may want to loop a couple just to get my pacing right. But on the whole, get, give your opponent the chance to show you what he's got, so that you get a, a good chance to basically have a look at everything. Um, what you're looking for while, while he's doing that is because you know nothing about him, you're looking for anything that stands out to you immediately as, as strange or quirky, unusual or, or kind of weak, a possible weakness. So what kind of examples of that? Well, everyone's different, but here's the sort of thing I would be looking for. Um, say we're counter hitting, you know, everyone does a counter hit fairly well. And let's say I block a few and give my opponent a chance to loop. Well, if he's looping and the first thing I see him do is basically instead of a nice salute, if I see him bring his elbow up, okay, 
What that's going to tell me? Possibly he's going to be erratic on his forehand. So I'm going to look for that. If I see him loop instead of a nice salute, if he comes across his body, that tells me he might have some problems with recovery you know, after hitting his first ball. Um, if, if he's doing something strange with his backswing and swinging around to the back or um, anything like that, it gives you another piece of information and that's what you're looking for. Things that stand out from ordinary, vanilla, standard, accepted technique. Because what he does differently, it may or may not be a weakness, but it gives you a chance to sort of say, well, that's different. That might be something I can exploit. And same thing on the backhand, backhand side. Is he free with the wrist? Is he got a, has he got a stiff wrist and playing like that? Does he play his backhand from a forehand stance? Or is he going around all the way? Anything like that will give you a, a hint, and that's what you've, you've only got a couple of minutes, so you're not going to be able to get 10 bits of information. But these kind of things, anything that's a little bit out of the ordinary, can clue you in on some ideas. That's the sort of stuff you're looking for. Okay? Um, Alright. I'd also, during the warm up, say we're hitting forehand to forehand, I'd put one without telling him, just put one to the other side of the table or, or down the middle, right at him and just see what he does. You know, if we're hitting like this and I put one here, I want to, what I want to know is I want to know does he, does he just go play the backhand? Does he move and play a nice forehand? Does he reach across? Or does he actually do nothing and just let the ball hit him? Did he not even you know, sort of pay attention and it just wax into him? All of that gives me some information about my opponent. Because if he does that, if he if he switches to the backhand, well, he's obviously switched on, he's paying attention, so his focus is probably going to be okay, his concentration, he's already concentrating on the match. So that's one bit I've got to worry about. I've got to know that he's switched on. Secondly, his transition is probably good, because he's gone from there to there, no problems. If he's moved from here, and you put it here, and he moves and hits another forehand, well, that possibly tells you another bit of information. And again, these, I'm talking in terms of probabilities rather than absolute information. You, you're, you're taking informed guesses. But if I put the ball here after we're hitting, and I put the ball there, and my opponent moves and hits another forehand, well, either he maybe is weak on the, a little weaker on the backhand, or he's got very good footwork and he's just warming up his footwork, possibly, he might be actually the type of player who, when playing a forehand, waits for another forehand and now he can't get over to the backhand. So that's a, a useful little bit of information to watch for then during the match. Because if he plays a forehand and comes back to the forehand and you put it here, you may catch him. So I would file that away as, hmm, that might be something that's possible. Of course, if he just basically leans over and hits it, well, it might be a warm-up and he's just conserving his energy or not switched on. So that possibly tells me that he's not yet got himself into the game mode yet. He's not moving his feet. So he could be conserving energy, so maybe his fitness is not up to scratch. Or he could just be lazy, a lazy player and then just can't be bothered. So he might not be taking you seriously or taking the match seriously yet. So again, it gives you a little bit more information. And if he just doesn't even sort of notice it, and just it just kind of bang hits him, well, he's obviously not focused at all, because he, he hasn't tweaked or he hasn't picked it up. So just something as simple as that can still give you a little bit of information. Do a few more, do it again, see what happens the second time. Now, if the second time he corrects and either plays the backhand or moves, well, he's probably, that might have just been a one-off and, he, and he's got himself together. You know, so if he does it again, well, you probably know that that's a consistent pattern in his behaviour. So it's a little bit of information that you can file away, depending on what, how he handles it. During the warm-up, what I'd also do is probably, without warning him, um, I'd change and I'd hit a couple with my long pips. 
all my anti-spin if I'm using anti-spin. And I wouldn't tell him. I wouldn't. I'd just be there, and suddenly I would do something with my long pips, and I'd see what happens, see what he, how he handles it, because that's going to give you probably a little bit of information as well. Now, what I mean by that is, if he, if he's hitting and you suddenly swap, and if he just basically continues without any problem, okay, that tells you some information. That firstly, he's paying enough attention to notice that yours, you've twiddled, and if he handles the ball correctly without any problems, well, he's good enough to basically adjust during an unexpected warm-up, you know, change, an unexpected change in the warm-up. He's good enough to change and handle that without a problem. So you better be switched on because he's obviously um, knows his stuff against the long pimples and he's focused and aware. If he stutters or hesitates and sort of, sort of oh, makes a mess of it, well, it could be that he's not paying too much attention and also could be that he doesn't handle that style of the long pips very well as, as well. So again, that may then tell you to, if you can get in a game and use a little bit of twiddling and a bit of deception, he may not handle that very well. And again, we're talking about a two-minute warm-up, so you're making a rough guess, an informed opinion, rather than an exact truth. So all you can do is say, well, probably or possibly this might be something I can exploit. It's not exact. Uh, if he then, what I would then do is I would do it again, a second time without warning, and I'd see whether he adjusts again. If he handled it smoothly the first time, it might have been a fluke. Um, he might not have noticed and just, just done it. So if I do it, block a few and twiddle again to the other side, and he handles it smoothly again, okay, he probably knows his stuff. If he, if he made a stuff up the first time, but the second time he handles it okay, well, he probably does know his stuff, but he was just, you know, he mentally wasn't there at the time. But again, you've learned something. If he stuffs it up again, well, in that case, he should be a bit more prepared for you to do it. And if he makes a mess of it again, you've learnt that he possibly could be weak, not only against that shot, but against the twiddle. So, again, useful information. Now, in order not to give him too much information, what I would be doing is I would be using a stroke with my long pips or my anti-spin. I'd use a stroke that I don't actually use very much in a match. Now, as a defender... I don't spend a lot of time up at the table blocking. So the stroke I would use would be basically just a little chop block close to the table because he's not going to see me doing that a lot in the match anyway. If I was a push blocker who stood here and went push, 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 little roll, well, I might go back and chop one or I might actually do a little loop type stroke just to throw him off and again, it gives him the variation, but without exposing you know, anything that you're about to use in the first game. So don't give him too much information. So try and use a stroke that you don't really use very much um, during matches so that you get the benefit of seeing how he handles it and he doesn't get the benefit of seeing against your stroke. Okay? Um, Just following on from that, another thing that I'll just mention um, is that you know some opponents want you to hit with the long pips during the warm-up. Now that can get really kind of if you don't want to do it and and don't like showing your opponent your long pips, it can get a little bit nasty because basically he really has no right to tell you what side to use. But it can get very aggravating and it can distract you because. He's telling you, oh, please hit a few of them on pips, and you're thinking, well, I don't want to. Um, and then you start worrying about that. If you say no and he gets upset, and then you get upset, and suddenly you, your focus is gone. Uh, I haven't had a lot of people ever tell me, use them or else. Um, so most of the time during a warm-up, I will mainly use my inverted to make the warm-up smooth and just twiddle to see my opponent's reaction. But... If he does request that I use it for him, I would use it in a way that I don't actually use during a match. So again, as a defender, I'm going to be back chopping a lot, and I will occasionally roll with my long pips. So if my opponent said to me, you know, give me a few of the long pips, I would basically stand here and just go, 
do something because that way he gets what he wants and I aren't giving him I'm not giving him anything that's going to help him. And how long would I do it for? Well, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, I don't want to spend my whole time warming up with my long pips. I want to do what I want to do. So do enough just to make him happy but don't give away any, any real secrets. And he can't then complain when you're not doing that during the match. You know, that's up to you how you want to use them. But it's probably better just to go along with that and save yourself the distraction and the aggravation of having him upset and possibly you getting upset. Um, unless you're the type of person who can basically handle that and just say, well, you know, tough luck, and then go and play. And if that doesn't affect you, well, um, that may be a good way to go. You may upset your opponent. And strictly speaking, um, it's none of his business how you warm up. Uh, you should be able to warm up however you like, whatever surfaces you like. So uh, it's a little bit of a trade-off, really. Do whatever works better for you, but don't give away your best shots. during the warm-up or before the warm-up or after the warm-up, get a look at his bat. Even if he's not a, um, not a combination bat user, doesn't matter. Get a look at his bat. He's probably going to want to take a look at yours anyway. So you have a look at his. Now, if he's, um, what you're looking for is you're looking for some signs on the bat to help you know a little bit more about him anyway. Okay? And what I mean by that is basically... Um, what you're looking for is kind of, um, to start with, the actual blade and the rubbers will tell you something about it. So, okay, if you can see that he's using um, a very fast blade, uh, a, you know, a hitter's blade versus a looper's blade, uh, if someone's using sort of like a, a big, thick Hinoki or um, a Schlager, butterfly Schlager blade, or something that you know is super fast, well, you can probably expect a lot of power coming at you. If someone's using something like a, a T-Mobile Spirit, um, which is quick but also soft feel, you're probably going to get a lot of spin loops. Um, and so on, if someone's using a, an all-rounder blade, you may get a lot of controlled play of all sorts, and a defensive play you may get more pushing and stuff. So the blade will tell you something. The rubbers themselves will tell you something. I mean, just the type of rubber, whether it's Bryce, you know, something super fast, or Kennedy, or tackiness chop, or so paying attention to what rubber he's using and the thickness of the sponge is also going to give you some useful information about whether he's looking to power through, spin, control the ball. So pay attention to that stuff. That's going to be helpful. Um, also, just what would be useful to look for is get a look at the finger marks on his blade and on the rubbers. Okay? If he's using inverted on both sides, um, he's probably not twiddling. Okay? Most inverted rubber, normal rubber users aren't going to twiddle, it's not really worth their effort. So take a look at basically the back of the rubber and try and see where the finger mark is from his index finger. And what I mean by that is basically, if, you've got, if he's got a mark that basically stays where his index finger is, on the bat. So you can look at the bat and say, oh well, there's a very little thing that almost looks like an index finger on his backhand. You know he doesn't change grip very much. So whatever grip he uses in the warm-up, that's pretty much what's, what it's going to be when you play during a match. Okay? If there's a big wide kind of semi, you know, part of an arc, you know, like a, a pie slice, slice of pie around the backhand, you know that he moves his index finger a lot, that tells you that he's probably changing his grip an awful lot. Okay, What does that tell you? Well, that may tell you that he brings the index finger up for his forehand and drops it back down for his backhand. So he's got grip changes going on. Why is that important? Well, he may be suspect to playing side to side. He may not transition his grip very well. Or you may be able to catch him sort of playing one to the elbow get him here, change the other side and catch him. So it's, it's useful information from that point of view. Um, also, uh, probably with that one, uh, if he's a combination bat user like you are, okay, 
definitely get a look because what you want to see is if, if it's like on this bat here, uh, have a look at the forehand side and although you can't see it, I'll, I'll bring a close up a, a little bit later on. Basically I've got on my forehand side a mark running from sort of here to there where I twiddle and put my finger on the back when I use it on the backhand. So if you see a big mark on the forehand side there, you know he twiddles pretty regularly. Now, if you don't see one, well he either doesn't twiddle very much or he's got a new sheet of rubber and it hasn't had time. <laughs> so you, you can't say for sure he, he doesn't twiddle or you can say as well it's either new or, or possibly you know, he doesn't twiddle very much. But if you do see a big finger mark, well okay he probably twiddles quite a bit you know, and uses it on the other side. Useful information. Same with the pips. Try and see if, if you hold it to the light or the anti-spin, you'll probably see, and I can see a pattern on mine, where my finger goes on the pips. And it will again give you information whether he's moving the finger around and also, uh, also probably will tell you how high up the bat he holds it. Because if he holds it right up the bat, he's going to have more trouble twiddling than if his grip is loose. Useful information. If you can see a thumb mark, you know, from his thumb on the forehand side of that rubber, well, anybody who gets a thumb mark has probably got a slightly restricted forehand grip. So you can probably expect that his forehand's not going to be as strong as perhaps his backhand sign. So you can expect him to be playing more backhands. Because anyone leaving a big thumb mark is going to have an awkward looking forehand. Again, something that's useful, uh, good information. The final thing is during the warm up itself, while you're warming up, because it's just counter hitting and you're hitting back and forth for a while for some parts, while he's doing that, try and actually get a look at the grip. Doesn't matter if you miss the ball, but get a look how he holds it, and when you swap to the other side, try and also get a look and see whether he changes. Because that will tell you, firstly, is he holding it in a strong forehand, or a neutral, or a backhand grip? You know, that will tell you information about, you know, is he, if he's holding in a big forehand grip here and he doesn't change when he goes to the backhand, he's going to have a weaker backhand. His backhand's going to be restricted. If he has the big forehand grip and he does change, well, he's going to be looping off both sides or attacking off both sides, but he may be suspect if you can put it some placement and speed, he may get caught on the transition. Okay? If he holds it neutrally and plays from both, well, again, that tells you that you're not going to catch him on swapping side to side. So get a look at his grip and see actually how he holds it, because it will help you know what to expect a little bit more. Okay, that's, I mean, you're not going to remember all of that in the warm-up, obviously, but the idea is, you know, you're warming up, you're a little bit nervous, you maybe have never seen this guy before, even if you only remember a couple of those things in that two minutes, you've got something to think about, to concentrate on, that gives you a little bit of information, a little bit of a heads up, and possibly a little bit of an edge on your opponent. And that helps relax you and make you feel a little bit better. Plus it gives you something to focus on, rather than just kind of like standing there going, do you wonder how I'm going to play today? You know, you, you're doing something positive. So you don't have to remember all of that, but if you do a few of it, you're going to feel that you've got a little bit of an edge on your opponent um, and you've already found out some information about him um, that he hopefully doesn't know so much about you. So that's a positive. Of course you have to be aware that we're talking general, general, generalities here. Okay? It may not be exact. He may do stuff in the warm-up that he doesn't do during a match, you know, especially if he's a bit sneaky. Um, he may be the type of person who just stands there in a warm-up and doesn't switch on until suddenly the umpire says, you know, game on, and now he's switched on. Okay, that's fine. You know, so you can't say that all the information is going to be 100% correct, but your chances are you're going to at least get one or two useful bits. And, and that's not a bad thing for somebody who hasn't scouted his opponent. So, we're through the warm-up and we're into the first game. 
and I'll really just sort of deal with the first game here and what you can learn in this first game process because the second and the third, well, are the same thing but continuing on as the match goes and the tactics change. So you're into the first game, what can you learn? What, you should, what should you be thinking about during this first game to help you develop and think about um, so that you can get a, get a set of tactics together for this player, um, a winning set of tactics, or at least a set of tactics that's going to help you as much as possible and let you do your best against this player. So what can we do in the first game to basically uh, get as much information about your opponent as possible? Okay. Well, the first thing, first proviso to keep in mind is that okay, you, you want to get information about your opponent but not at the cost of giving away free points. Okay? So it's no good saying, OK, I'm going to do this and I learned something there, but I gave away a cheap point. Because every point now when you're playing to 11, every point is critical. So you have to still be playing your strong game. But within that restriction, there's still a lot you can do in the first game to uh, learn about your opponent. And uh, I'll just talk about that now. Okay. Again, you may not remember every single one of these things. I know I don't. But these are the sort of things that if you pay attention and learn two or three things, you're going to be better off than if you don't pay attention at all and learn nothing. So here's the sort of stuff I would be looking for in the first game when I'm playing someone who's completely new to me and never played before. Okay, First thing I'll be looking for, or one of the things I'll be looking for, is I want to know... Where does he move after he serves? Okay, so assuming he's using the old pendulum serve, where does he go? Does he go over here? Does he come to the middle? Or for some reason, does he actually come over and start trying to force you with his pendulum serve to play the ball here and come over this side and open up with a big backhand? Okay, I want to know where he recovers to. So although I've still got to look at the ball while he's serving and concentrate on my return, at the end of each point, I'm just kind of mentally cataloguing, okay, we've played the points out, when he served, where did he move to? And just try and follow that information away. And if he always serves and goes here, or serves and comes here, well, okay, you're playing someone who's looking for big forehands. Um, it's really as simple as that. It's just paying attention to something that, um, if you were watching from the sidelines, um, you'd be able to say it's pretty obvious. Not so easy to do during a match, but very useful. So yeah, pay attention where he's moving. And not just to the side. Pay attention to whether he's moving in or whether he's moving back. Because if he's in close, he's probably hoping to get balls and hit them over the table. And angle and pressure... If he serves and moves back, he's probably looking to loop and spin up. Again, another valuable bit of information. Okay, uh, again, just like in the warm-up, I would be double-checking and confirming where, where is his grip. Is his grip really what I thought it was during the warm-up? You know, so is it really neutral on both sides? Does it really? Is it really a strong forehand? Is it really a strong backhand? Um, just so that I'm not making an incorrect assumption. And again, that's going to be fairly obvious pretty much straight away. Um, so, you know, you'll play a point or two and you'll suddenly go, yeah, yeah, he is doing the same thing, or no, he's not. And then you'll adjust. But pay attention to it. Um, I'd also check his stance. During the warm-up, it's not always a great idea. You can't always tell a lot during the warm-up about his stance. During the game, though, You'll be able to see, is he standing forehand stance, quite square, or is he coming over playing in a backhand stance? Okay, you need to know that. You, you should be aware of it. Okay? Because that's going to control where you put the ball a lot. If he's in a big forehand stance, well, over this way is going to be good or very wide to the forehand. If he's in a big backhand stance, well, again, same thing, very wide to the backhand or over here. So check that. Um, it, it sounds, um, I guess, obvious, but it's important. Important for you to know.
while you're serving, okay, during this first game, he's got 10 serves, you've got 10 serves, more or less, assuming it's around about 11-9 or, or whatever. But there's basically around about 10 serves each. Now, while you want to make your serves as effective as possible, you also want to get a, a little bit of a look, as much as possible, at how he handles different things. Okay? Because at the moment, you've got no idea how he handles any of his serves. So if I'm going to be serving, what I've got to do is I want to see, I want to serve a lot of double bounce serves because that's safe and aggressive for me at the same time. But what I also probably want to do is I want to spread it. I want to get into his playing elbow and cross his playing elbow, either using my forehand pendulum or a backhand serve. I want to get out to his forehand, you know, and, and get him over here. I want to get over to his backhand and see what he does. I want probably at least one good long fast serve with a heavy spin on it, just to see what he does. You know, does he handle it smoothly or does he go, whoa, you know, kind of, that will give me some information. If he doesn't handle it well, I'll probably serve another one at some point. If he handles it very easily, well, you've got to be more cautious and probably do a better serve to the elbow or, or something. But I, I, I want that information. I want to know how good he is against a good long fast serve. Because getting down to the wire when it's under pressure, I may need to throw in a good long fast one just to break up the game. Otherwise, he'll probably be expecting everything here and he'll be pressuring. So I, I need to know how well he handles the long stuff. I've got to move the ball around, forehand, backhand, playing elbow. I may also drop in a very short serve. And by sh very short, I mean rather than the usual serve, bounce, and second bounce near the white line, I may try and drop one really, really near the net and just see what he does. See whether he, he gets in or whether he doesn't get in in time and how he handles the ball. When I do it, I've got to be aware of angles and recovery you know, because if he does handle it well, he's got a lot of angle. So I would probably serve it and I would be ready. But I'll, I would like to see how he handles a very short serve and file that information away. So using my 10 serves, I'm looking for mainly double bounces, at least one good long serve, possibly a good very short serve, and move the ball around to different locations on the table so that I can see how does he play it here? How does he play the push? How does he play the flick? How does he play it from here? How does he play it from there? And file that information away. Okay? So make the most of your first 10 serves because they're going to help you in the second, third game to know what you can go to under pressure that's got a good chance of success versus what's likely to get blasted past you. Um, yeah, obviously, mix up the spin, so you don't want everything to be the same. You've got to see how he handles. How does he handle the backspin serve? How does he handle a float, a deceptive float serve, or a little bit of top spin? Um, you may find a weakness that you didn't know was there. Uh, unless you try it, you'll never know. But you have to make them good serves. Uh, when he's returning serve, try and pay, pay attention to basically, is he favouring a certain side? Does he stand over here and try and take everything forehand? No. Does he chicken wing and do everything on the backhand? Does he stand here and play both sides? Uh, good information to know. Um, stuff you need to know in order to form a tactical plan of what to do. Pay attention, and this is, I think, fairly uh, a fairly important point. Try and pay attention to where he wins points against you. Okay. Now, I don't mean focus on it to the to the detriment of everything else. Don't don't get obsessed with it. But during the point, if you're playing, and he manages to open up and then whip a forehand past you, and he does that three or four times during that first game, 
Well, okay, that's probably a strength. You know, if he's serving and, and pushing with a heavy spin and you dump it in the net a few times, okay, that's a strength. You have to be, you remember, you're starting from nothing. So wherever he's winning points against you in that first game, assuming he's playing his normal style, that's probably going to be his strength. And whether that's a spin loop open followed by a power ball, whether it's a big, big serve followed by a straightaway big third ball attack, whether he's controlling you over the table, waiting for an easy ball, putting it away, or just beating you with the speed of the pushes and placement, Whatever you're losing on, well, okay, you can take a, a fairly good idea that those are going to be his strengths. And you can start coming up with a plan to try and negate that. Uh, also, when, when I'm talking about opening up his attack, if you can pay attention to whether he's opening up off a backspin ball where you're pushing, is he opening up with the lift, or is he actually trying to get a top spin ball so that he can loop over? Um, it's an important piece of information. Some players prefer, uh, a good example is someone like um, Kiet Tran from New South Wales. Um, he really prefers a lot of top spinny serve because his follow-up ball, his favourite third ball, is a counter loop over the table. Um, he doesn't use a lot of backspin serves because he doesn't actually want to lift the ball that much. He wants to top spin over. And if you're playing Kiet, you know, if you can push the ball with a bit of spin, you're probably better off than flicking a lot, unless you've got someone like William Hensel who can handle, handle it. It's good information to have, knowing, hey, pay attention that, hey, this guy's serving everything top spin and looping over the top, rather than just saying, well, okay, I know he's blasting the ball past me, but I don't know what setup ball he's using. So pay attention. Uh, check also, if you can, how does he move around the court? So is he, is he moving smoothly and easily? Does he reach and just lunge for the ball? You know, does he lean a lot? That kind of stuff will give you, again, some information on, on where you should be putting the ball. You know, should you be moving him or playing into the elbow, um, all that sort of stuff. Some players will play better with the ball coming at them and moving out of the way. Some players will play better when they're actually the ball's away from them and they can swing. Uh, if you're watching or at least being just aware of how he's moving, it'll give you some more information. And if he, of course, doesn't move well, you try and move him around a little bit, get him off balance. How does he handle um, your long pips, your anti-spin? Okay, this is this is again a pretty important point. Okay, so what you're looking to do is you're basically looking firstly just to see what's his attitude. You know, is he complaining about them or unhappy about them? Is he indifferent and and doesn't really care, you know, about them at all? Make no comment. Doesn't look fussed. Um, is he actually enjoying it? You know, you're playing someone who's, you're twiddling and doing all this stuff, he's playing at the other end and beating you and he's smiling about it, you're probably in a little bit of trouble because you've got somebody who knows what he's doing and can do, do it well enough to put you under pressure and win the point. You know, so be alert to his attitude about them. If, again, you're playing somebody who's beating you but they're not happy you know, with the long pips, you know, and they're complaining about it, but they're still beating you, well, you know you've got to get your long pips into play a lot more. You know, important information to have. Uh, also, with the long pips, with the anti-spin, try and be aware, and this will, this will be pretty obvious fairly soon, um, is he avoiding your long pips? Is he staying away from your long pips or your anti-spin? Is he targeting them, actually looking to try and get them and tie you down, or is he completely indifferent and just moving the ball around at will? Each thing will tell you something about your opponent. If he's targeting your long pips or your anti-spin, and he's actually playing to them, and then using that to set up his opening attack, well that tells you, you know, basically he's very comfortable opening up against that, that
that stuff. So you need to be getting in tactically, changing stuff around, getting in with your inverted a little bit more often, break things up. If he's avoiding them and trying to play to your inverted side, well, that's a good piece of information because that tells you he doesn't want to open against these your anti-spin. So put them all, get the anti-spin into the game, get the long pips into the game a bit more and make him try and open against that. Um, if he's completely indifferent and doesn't matter really, he'll, he's just playing and wherever he puts the ball, doesn't matter whether you hit it with your inverted or with your pips, he just opens up and, and plays. Well, if he's winning doing that and winning easily, you're just probably up against a better player. Um, no shame in that. If it's close and he's doing that, well, then you, you're still in with a shot because you know, all it takes is a, a little shift of ta tactics either way and you can possibly get on top of him. But it's important to know. Um, also, once he opens up, and by opening up I'm, I really just mean his first attack, first real top spin. Okay? When he opens up, where does he put it? Okay? Is he actually playing, 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 opening, hitting that first attack? Is he hitting it too your long pips and your anti-spin, or is he hitting the first attack to your inverted side and staying away from it? That tells you something because that tells you is he more comfortable against a block with the inverted, the standard stuff, or is he more comfortable and quite happy to open to your pips and get the spin reversal or whatever you're doing and then keep going with that. Again, useful information because it allows you to vary your tactics. Pay attention to that. Uh, and finally, when he kills the ball, and actually or tries to kill the ball, so he's opened it up to somewhere and then tries to put it away, where does he put it away? You know, does he always put it away towards your inverted? Does he always put it away towards your long pit? Or does he just move it around? Um, again, it's good information to have, and it will tell you something about him. Uh, finally, in terms of long pips and anti-spin, um, is he reading it? Um, this, <laughs> this is, it's important to know. Um, if, you're, if you're varying and trying to actually be tricky and vary the spin with the long pips and move it around, how is he handling it? Is he handling it without any problems? Is he struggling with it? Or, or has he got absolutely no idea? You, know, you need to know that. Uh, because if, if you're doing all your tricky stuff and he's handling it without any problems and putting the ball past you, well, in that case, you're probably going to have to go to a plan B and tighten up your game some other way. And the twiddling, you may need to cut that down so that you can play some other style because all of the extra tricky stuff isn't working for you, so you need to move to something else. If it is working but you're just struggling to get it in often enough, well then you need to find a set of tactics that allows you to exploit it more often. Okay? And so it all leads into what tactical plan. Okay, take notice of whether he's serving long and short and whether he's playing the short game with you or playing an open power game with you. So if your opponent is serving short, and pushing and then waiting for an easy waiting for the right ball to get in okay, your tactics going to have to be different because he's obviously patient and waiting for the right thing whereas if he's just serving long and going bang big power or serving short with spin trying to get the ball popped up and come through again it's a different set of tactics so one opponent's trying to be patient and set up a ball because he's, he's not confident enough to hit anything. He needs to wait for the right ball. The other opponent is confident enough just to go for anything. Now, if that's working for him, you're going to need to vary. If it's not working for him, well, that's great. That just basically means he isn't reading your spin, he doesn't really have the shot to beat you, and you'll, you'll probably keep on winning unless he changes tactics. So you would probably keep feeding it and keep tempting him to, to play it. And talking of changing tactics, yeah, the last thing I'll just mention is 
um, be aware of has he changed tactics during the first game. So compared to the first half of the game and the last half of the game, is he still playing the same way? Because if he's changed tactics, you need to be thinking about, okay, what has he changed to and why? Because that may give you a very good clue about what you should be trying to do more of. Um, a typical example would be, let's say you're a, you're a push blocker up at the table and you're currently in the first half of the game, your opponent had all sorts of trouble playing your long pips and you got a lot of easy putaways and in the second half of the game you suddenly started to play everything to your forehand to your inverted rubber. Well, you know, if that's working against you and basically you're having trouble, what he's found is he's found a winning strategy to get to your inverted side. But it also tells you that he's not liking the long pip side or the anti-spin side. So you've then got to say, OK, well, I've got to start getting twiddling and getting this anti-spin side, or I've got to come around and try and get my anti-spin and my long pips that way, or I've got to play more out to his forehand to try and encourage the cross... You know, sorry, more out to his backhand to try and encourage him to come back along this backhand side. All of those three, those three things are in response to his change of tactics. So if he's changed tactics, try and be aware of what he's changed to and the possible reasons why he might have changed so that you can adjust your tactics. Okay, so as you can see, for, in terms of reading an opponent, um, there's actually a lot of things you can do even though you've never seen an opponent before in your life. Um, there's lots of things that you can learn in the warm-up um, and in just during that first game that will help you basically come up with a better tactical plan to beat the person, provided you're paying attention. Are you going to remember every single one of these things? No way. You know, there's obviously probably too many to keep track of. But... As long as you're aware of there are things to be looking for, you'll probably find that you'll look for certain things in terms of your own game. You'll develop stuff that you look for automatically. You know, and there'll be some things that you'll sometimes remember and sometimes you'll forget and you know, or you don't care so much about. But as long as you've got probably two or three things to look for in the warm-up and two, three, four things during the first game to be aware of, and particularly, basically, where is he winning points and how is he handling your long pips, you know, and is he changing tactics. If you've got that going for you, there's a good chance that you're going to be able to improve your tactical plan coming up for game two. And, and that's really about all you could ask for, for an, against an opponent that you've never seen. Um, and again, if you're playing someone who's very, very weak, it doesn't really matter because you could play any way you want and you'll still beat them. If you're playing someone who's way, way stronger, it doesn't matter so much because, okay, you'll probably have a style or find a way that will allow you to do your best, but you're not going to be in any danger of beating them anyway. Now, but it's good practice to use your tactics and, and pay attention. But for all those guys who are within range of you, you know, all the danger opponents who who are close to you but below and who might beat you if they're having a good day, the ones who are at your level or the ones who are just a little bit better than you and if you play them tactically well, you might get over the line. You know, Those are probably the people you play hopefully most often in your league matches or in your regular tournaments. Now, those are the ones that you want to win as many as possible and by being able to read your opponent and see what's actually going on in the match, you're going to improve your chances of, of winning like down the track. So having talked about reading your opponent, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get myself a drink and wet my throat, and I'm going to come back and talk about what you really should have done before trying to read your opponent in the warm-up and in the um, first game, and that's scouting your opponent in advance. So... Give me a second and I'll be right back.